Hey everyone, this is Barbara from Porcaso and, and I'm Ron. And wanna welcome you from to Picasso. our <laughs> wanna welcome you to our West Hampton Beach uh, paint night. We were hoping to see you guys in person this year, but I guess we're gonna have to do it virtual one more time. Um, so anyway, tonight this is our painting. We're doing these beautiful seahorses. A um, couple things you want to have before we get started. So you should get yourself some kind of cup of water uh, just to be able to clean your brushes in. Um, and you should have all your paints. We have it in a palette, but you should have little uh, paint cups with that in it. You probably want to have maybe a pencil nearby just in case you have to sketch something out. Um, I also did give an option, and I am going to be giving a lot of options tonight for you. Um, but what we did is we put in these stencils um, for you so that if for some reason something happens and you have a problem with your seahorse, you can cut your seahorse out here and just uh, re-stencil it on. Or if you're one of the younger uh, kids and it's too difficult to paint around the seahorse, you can do your background first. We're gonna show you the other way, but if you wanna do your background first and then do your seahorses over it, again, that's why we gave you the stencils. Just keep in mind that obviously the colors won't be as vibrant if you do it that way. But if you're okay with that and you'd rather have them do the whole background and then put the seahorses on top, it's just another option. So we gave you some cutouts. And if you don't use them for the painting, you could have some fun with them in another way. All right, so we're gonna get started. Okay, so I'm pretty much gonna give the basic directions and we're gonna have Painter Ron uh, do the painting and then go ahead and give you some uh, great tips. You should have two brushes, uh, a large brush and a small brush. So keep in mind that the large brush is always um, for your larger spaces. So when you have a big space, like let's say over here, you could use your large brush, but when you have a little space like here, you wanna use your smaller brush. Some of you might have your own brushes. If you have a medium brush, that's fine. You could use that. Uh, also keep in mind, if you want to return the brushes to us at the end of this, uh, anytime in the future, we will give you a $5 uh, coupon towards either a paint night or anything in our store. So just uh, the brushes are the most expensive part and we like to have them to be able to give out with the paint kit. So if you're not gonna be using them, please bring them back and we will um, give you a nice certificate for that. Okay, so as I said earlier, we're going to do it where uh, the order that we would normally do it in if you were in our art studio. So Ron, painter Ron, is going to start with the seahorses. So he's going to do that because that's the lighter color and usually or typically in a painting, you wanna do your lighter colors first because later on, if you have messed up a little bit, like gone out of the lines, um, you could use the darker color to cover that. So that's why we're gonna start with our larger uh, seahorse and Ron is gonna start with the yellow base so you can watch how he does it. So if you notice, Ron is going really close to the edge there of the pencil line or the Sharpie. Um, we did some in pencil, some in Sharpie. If, if you have it in pencil, you're welcome to just darken it if you want to. Some people don't like it dark like that, so that's up to you. Um, but anyway, you can see that he's using his small brush and he's going around as uh, carefully as possible, trying to get inside the lines. But of course, it's okay if you go outside, don't get upset about it. But take your time and go slow. And you wanna to try to like have enough paint on your brush. You shouldn't hear any kind of scratching noise when you're painting. Uh, it should just, you know, be very quiet and relaxing. And try to use just one stroke going in one direction. Notice he's not going in a whole bunch of different directions. He's just trying to follow the line. Okay. So Ron is uh, outlining towards the head. And again, now he's filling the head in a little bit, still using his smaller brush. We're not really gonna use the big brush in this one until uh, we do the background. You wanna to try to make sure you cover all of the white in the canvas. So obviously you can um, stop this tape whenever you need to, if you need to catch up uh, or do something and then come back to it. Uh, but if you do run into any problems or questions uh, that you don't know what to do, uh, you could always get in touch with us, either call us or you can come by and we'll be more than happy to help you. So we are still open during the pandemic. And normally we'd have some nice music playing in the background, but um, if we do that, YouTube flags us and doesn't let us put it on there. So I'm, we don't have any music and I'd sing, but you wouldn't want to really hear me. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. So you could see already, like as Ron's going, you know, he's using a pretty thick line to outline there. And then he's going to just go ahead and still use that small brush, but fill in all the white space in between.
no lumps. I'm not sure if you heard Ron, but he said if you have any lumps, like if you have lots of paint in one spot, before you dip your brush again, you want to spread that out. Um, the thinner, you know, the thinner it is, the better. You want it to be just thick enough to cover uh, the white, but you don't want it to be like little gobs, right? Little blobbies or anything like that. Now that he outlined, Ron's gonna go ahead and fill in this, like the, the belly of the seahorse. I love seahorses. And after he does that, Ron is also gonna show you how to go ahead and shadow. So first we're gonna fill it all in. And of course, by the way, although we're giving you one to look at, if you wanna mix your colors and make something different, you are more than welcome to. So we always give you one to guide you, but it's your own creation. And you know, nature has all different colors, seahorses and water and everything. So you could really make it any color you want. We're just gonna show you the basic colors that we have. So Ron's gonna finish it off by very slowly. So again, the smaller areas you wanna go really slow so that you don't miss. And then once Ron's done filling that in, he's gonna go ahead and start to shadow. And again, we're going to go off the original painting. So he's going to shadow it in some orange and red, Ron, or just orange? Orange and red. Orange yeah. and red. Okay, so I'm going to start first with the orange, but um, you don't have to wash your brush right now, even though we're going orange. Just take it to your... And wipe off some of the paint. And you could use paper towel if you don't have a rag. Now go right into the orange. So using that same brush, you're gonna dip into the orange and now you're gonna add some highlights or some shadows. And again, you could try to follow the little picture that we gave you, but you could also just highlight it and shadow it the way you want. So you can watch Ron as he meticulously does this, but it's your seahorse, so make him look the way you want him to. So Ron did a little on the inside there and now he went a little towards the outside. Notice he's following the direction of the seahorse. I'm just adding some texture or shadow, whatever you want to call it, you can call it. But it's your seahorse, so you could do whatever you want to him or her. Okay, so now we want to blend this a little bit so it, it's not so straight or hard of a curved line. And... I'm gonna wipe my brush off. Again, we still haven't washed the brush. If for some reason you do dip your brush in the water, even though you don't have to, you wanna make sure you always dry it really well because otherwise it will drip down your painting and that's hard to fix. So now I wanna come back with some yellow and kind of go right on top. And you see how it all kind of blended there. So really you kind of use the yellow to spread out the orange a little bit, right, Ron? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so then you get like a little You don't bit. have to do it everywhere, just where you think you want it to be. See, like I kinda like that just like that. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I noticed you stayed mostly on the outsides, not so hard on the inside. Right. So the darker shadows are on the outside or the, by the outline of the seahorse, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And you're still just putting the yellow on top of some of the orange. Right. Okay. That looks good. Are you going to add some red? I or? think, yeah, I'm going to add some red. 
And if you notice, one thing that Ron does a lot is he takes like almost a step back or at least tilts his head back. And it's always good to look at your painting from a different angle. Sometimes you focus so much on one spot, you kind of have to take it in as a whole every once in a while. So that's okay to stop and, and pause and take a look at it. Now we can wipe our brush once again and go into your red paint. And we're gonna add some red. So you're basically doing the same thing now, just with the red? Uh, less of it. A little less of it. Maybe we'll put one here. And again, you're just picking spots. It doesn't really matter the where they pick, right? Right. But stay more towards the black outline or the pencil outline, um, or it doesn't matter? This doesn't matter. Okay. We got enough. Yeah, it looks really nice. I want to blend this just a little bit. So how are we going to blend it? We're going to wipe the red off. And we're going to dip into the orange. So the one shade lighter. Right. So we're going to, because it's just a little bit too much. And again, you're just using that orange to kind of spread the red out. Right. Yeah, I think um, it looks good. I think we're good. And again, just to show you how every time you do a painting, it's going to be a little different. Like you could see a difference right there, right? This time he had maybe a little bit more yellow and orange in here, but look how nice that looks. So why would you add more, right? So just, you know, keep that in mind. Oops, sorry. You can't really see it. But uh, keep that in mind when you're doing it, that it doesn't have to look exactly like the original painting. They're both really pretty, right? So, all right. So if you notice in this original painting, um, this medium guy, he's a little bit, uh, he's pretty much yellow. That's and the then, wife. <laughs> sorry. <And laughs> the, the Daddy, mommy, and baby. Okay. And then this little guy um, has the orange in it. But that sometimes is a little bit harder to do because it's so small. So we're going to swap that up. We're actually going to leave the baby just a solid yellow. And we're going to add some color into this one. Again, that's your choice, but we're just going to do it that way. So I wanted you to know that. All right. So still don't have to wash up brush, right, Ron? Um, no, you, you, you have to wash your brush. Uh, oh, we have to wash our brush. So take a second, wash your brush really well, get it nice and clean. Because we want to use yellow now. Right, and then dry it really clean. Again, with the smaller brush. So mine isn't that small. I think we gave them a smaller brush. Some of them might have mediums from the last time we did this though, so. But if you have a small, the smallest one you have, you definitely want to use for, for the small um, seahorse. If you had a medium one and you want to use it for that, uh, the bigger one, that's fine, and even for the medium one. But for the small one, you want to use the smallest brush you have. And that one, we're just keeping him yellow. So, and yeah. Just so I, I didn't mention it before, but I want to mention it now. When you use a, a brush that's pointy, a small one that you're using, you should dip it in the paint, stir it a little bit, and then take some of the paint off so that you get more of a point to the end because that's the ideal brush to have a point so that you could stay in detail in small places. Great tip. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> I 
And so we're going to let Ron finish filling in the little yellow guy so you guys can take your time and do that. Okay, so we're all done with the little baby. Now we're going to go on to the medium-sized seahorse. And uh, since we're doing the, the same background color of yellow, you don't have to wash your brush. You're dipping right back into that yellow. And uh, same thing he did with the larger one. You're going to go around, slowly go around, try to stay in the lines of the black outline. And then you could kind of fill it in as you go along. But it's always good to kind of do that, that detailed part first, and then you could kind of be a little bit looser with the middle part. I just move your hand, yeah. There. Just try to move your hand a little when you're showing them that's what see. Okay, so I'm gonna let Ron paint a little while you guys paint a little for yourselves. So Ron's working on that smaller part there of the tail. Way up. Also, when you're painting, you should try not to go with little tiny strokes. You should try to go with big ones. Like that. Or like this. because then it's it's more of a straight line than it is sketchy line. Choppy. Choppy would be ideal word to use. Guys should be finished up with uh, your yellow seahorse. So we're gonna start to use some orange like we did on the big seahorse. We have a little guest who wants to say hi. <laughs> say hi. <laughs> Do we say hi? What do you think of daddy's work? Good? Huh? Good job? Yeah. Okay, so let's add some orange. So same thing you did with the big us just adding a little less Ron? yes I thought you were making a statement <laughs> Sorry. okay so he's just gonna add a little bit of the orange again and notice he's not really rubbing it in right now he's just kind of drawing some lines and some spots and then you know from last time he's gonna then take his brush wipe it off a little and then spread out the paint Again, I hope you guys are having some fun with this. You really could do, you know, any design you want. Like if you even wanted to have a polka dotted seahorse, 
We're gonna show you how to do some polka dots later so you can use that same technique and add some polka dots to your seahorse. You could do stripes going the other way. So whatever it is that you wanna do, as long as you're having fun and expressing yourself, that's what the painting is all about. Okay, and then I'm gonna wipe some of that orange paint off from my brush and go to the yellow. So he's going back to yellow. And I'm gonna smooth this out. So he's going over the orange he just did and kind of blending it together and spreading it out at the same time. So he's going over it, but he's also widening the area. That looks nice. It's like you've done this before or something, painter Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Many years ago. <laughs> Wipe your brush off again, and go back into the yellow again. And I'm just trying to blend the orange. Right, so he's going to all the same spots he had put the orange in and just putting a little bit of yellow on top. And now he's gonna spread that out. Done? I think they're done. All right. Good job on the seahorses. So now we're just going to let that dry. So as you know, if you've ever been to our store, what we would do normally is take this and blow dry it uh, to get it nice and dry so that when you do in the background, it doesn't smear. So you have an option. You can have somebody do that, go blow dry it, or you can uh, just wait, shut us off for a little while, and then come back to us when it's nice and dry. So again, you just want it to be dry because if you start doing your blue, it's going to turn what color? Blue and yellow. It's going to end up turning like a greeny color, right? So we don't want to do that. All right, so we're done with our little seahorses. Uh, it's about time to go to our blue paint. So our background. So Ron's going to really do the same thing. He's going to use that medium brush. I mean, a small brush, sorry. And he's going to just do the outline like go or he could actually go on top of the black if you want. It's just going to fade that black a little bit. Um, and he's going to do that in a real nice and slow. And then we're going to finally, after we do all that, we'll use our bigger brush and kind of fill everything in. Um, and then Ron wanted me to mention, sorry, Ron, but he wanted me to mention that notice that he's starting on the left end of the paper on this side of the paper because he's right handed. Right. Yep. If you were left handed, you're probably going to want to start on this side and work your way because you don't want your hand to be in the wet paint. So you wanna work away from the wet paint. Okay. I interrupted you. Were Good you gonna job, Barbara. Thank you. Were you gonna say something? No. Okay. Looks like you're giving him hair right now. Oh, he's got blue hair. <laughs> What's wrong with that? It's his style. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna let Ron just kinda of fill in there. Just take your time, go down that, that pencil line or um, or Sharpie line. And again, it's okay to go over that line a little bit. That's just gonna be like a, an outline shadow. Also, you wanna make sure that you put enough paint down that you don't see white dots of the canvas. And you don't wanna have little lumps going around either. So if you do have a lump, you just wanna take your brush and spread it out a little bit. Right. And if you do have white dots, you want to make sure there's more paint on your brush. Now notice these little tiny areas, sometimes they're really hard. You have to go really slow with those little areas, like when you get around his tail also. Okay. But you know, if you get a little bit on there, don't worry about it. You could always use a little piece of paper towel to wipe it off or have somebody wipe it off for you. It's better to do it when it's wet than when it's dry. Or as Ron just used his finger to wipe it off. <laughs> Okay, so Ron's finishing up the outline there. You can see that he did a little extra here, and now he's gonna show you in a, in a minute or two how to like do the whole rest of the background. We're gonna use our bigger brush. So always take a little extra time when you get to these really small little areas.
Okay. All right. So now. So now, you're gonna take your smaller brush and take all the paint off of it if you can, and then put it in your water, wash it around, and take it out and dry it because you don't want to let the paint dry on your brush because then the brush will be no good. Um, and you don't want to leave them just sitting in the water because they get all bent. And now you want to take your largest brush and dip it in the blue. And when you dip it in the blue with the flat brush, you're going to wipe away some of the paint on each side, more on one than the other, okay? And now we can go in here and paint. This, in this case, we're going to paint the background in a vertical... Up and down. Up and down. Direct. Stroke. And when you get to some of the smaller areas, you could turn your brush sideways. I don't know if you're noticing Ron do that, but sometimes he's going flat, and then sometimes he goes on an angle. So when he wants to get into those smaller little areas, he brings it to the side. And am I right, Ron? We're going to cover all the white space now? We're going to cover all the white space Okay, now. so he's going to cover all the white space with the blue. That's the fun part. Get to fill that all in. Just be careful around your edges. So when you get around there, you want to go nice and slow. And remember, you could always turn your brush a little sideways if you need to. And try not to have too many strokes in there. So by that, I mean the background blue color may not be as consistent throughout the whole painting, but you can always go back once it dries and go over it again uh, with a very light coat of paint. And the reason you don't want to uh, use the brush going back and forth too much is because you eventually just start taking the paint off. So you're trying to get it darker, but it will end up just frustrating you because it will get lighter in different spots. So he's saying like you, you're better off doing a light coat and then going back and kind of painting over it later on if you need to. And see, he saw some globbies, so he just stretched those globbies out. He's got that one little missing spot right there. <laughs> there you go, now that's coming up. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. Can I pull that a little? You got it. Do I remove the top thing? Um, yeah, I can do that. Okay. We're gonna start oh, off. Okay, so as you can see, Ron finished doing his background. Uh, so this is a great time for you guys to have paused it and hopefully, you know, finished up the background yourself. And then when you're done, you could um, hit play and catch up again. We're gonna do the green algae uh, next. So uh, Ron or seaweed, whatever that is. So we're gonna go ahead and dry it. You guys take a break and um, you know finish up what you're doing and then we will continue with the green. Okay, so hopefully you have your background all done and now we're on to the green. We're going to start with the light green and we're going to use um, a smaller, the, brush. The smaller brush yeah. or a medium brush if you have a medium brush at home. And so what we want to do is just create a wavy, a wavy kind of seaweed. And you can make it any way you want. But just try not to go over it so many times. Use enough paint on your brush. Now you keep working it so that you get thin and thick. So now I'm going on to a little bit of thick, just because I feel like it. Another thick one here. Okay, let's start another one. Let's make this guy go this way. And I'll stop there. And then we'll put one in here.
Okay, I'm going to do one more right here. So what do you suggest, about four or five lines going down, like pieces of seaweed? Yeah, yeah. And what I want to just do before these few dry, I want to add the dark green shadow or dimension. All right, so do two or three big lines, and then we're going to go back with the dark green like you just did. So you did three lines, and now while it's still a little bit wet, you're going to go right into your green, dark green, dark right? Dark green, exactly. So you, you, you don't, yeah, you don't necessarily have to, don't use water. You can just dry some of the, the green, the light green off. And now you can dip right into the darker green. And we're just going to put it wherever you want. Put one there. Okay, so kind of the same thing you did with the um, seahorses, but you're doing it now with the green? Yes. You put, you put some there and then you spread it out? Uh-huh. Or I'm just making it it's like as going, we go. So you're painting it right so that's, over. That's, right, that's you're, good. You're painting it right over the light green. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that just adds a little bit of depth and shadowing? Yes. All right, so you guys can continue on. You see how he did that? Uh, continue on, and we'll finish this up on our end and come back and do a few more details. We have a little bit more to do. Okay, so hopefully you have all your seaweed done. Um, and now we're going to add some I have bubbles and some eyes. So this is kind of the fun part here. We're gonna use the blue, Ron. You're gonna lighten up your blue? Um, I think I'm, we're just gonna use white. Okay. I think it'll look better. Okay, so we're gonna use a little bit of the white paint and notice what Ron is doing. You wanna show them Ron? Taking the back of one of my brushes that isn't too big and not too small, and I'm gonna just dip it in my white paint. Uh, there we go, okay? So it's only on the end, but wipe a little off. It can't be too thick. It can't be too thick, okay. Now we're ready to go. I'm going to add some bubbles. What, can I... It's okay. okay. It's all the It's a little easier for you guys. You have it flat, so you should be fine with it. But it's, it's a, the paint dried out. <laughs> there we go. So this is the fun part. You get to put them wherever you want. Add some nice color. Brightens up your painting a little. And you can do different sizes, so you could use both size brushes if you want, but you should try to keep it pretty consistent. And you could probably only get three bubbles out of one, one, two, three. Let's see if I can make four. I made four, just about. And then you have to dip again. Exactly. Looking good, Ron. Oh, spoke too soon, Bobby. <laughs> I don't know, what do we do? Uh, a little wet paper towel would fix that, or you could have just also went over it with the blue. It's fine, too. Yeah, I'm going to go over it with the blue, too. You want me to do that part? There you go. All good. And you don't want to put any white there, by the way, until it dries, because it'll turn a funny little color. 
And I think after you do your white dots, Ron, we have three more very important dots to do. Yeah, I think these are done. All right, what do we have to do, though? We have to put in the eyes. Yeah, poor seahorses can't see. We have seahorses that can't see. So let's put some eyes on them. And you're going to basically do that the same way, right? Yes, I'm going to do it the exact way, but with a slightly smaller, a smaller brush, if possible. Black. <laughs> and we're going to dip it in the black. And put him in. And you notice that Ron puts his pinky down to hold his hand in place. That's a good little habit to get into. There you go. Wow, he could see. <laughs> Look at this little guy. He's just a baby. Oh! <laughs> Ta da! All right, I think we're all done, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you had fun. I did. And we will see you at Porcaso. <laughs> Again, if bye you have bye. any questions or concerns, just give us a call. We can always FaceTime with you. All right? Take care. Uh, have bye a good bye. one. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you.